Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with A Place Further Than The Universe episode number 7 reaction. Okay, the previous episode, it was another um, character development filled episode. Uh, we get here Hinata and Shirase who had a little bit of problem going on. Um, Hinata lost her passport and uh, you know she was like you know kind of uh, did not realize like you know the actual severity of the situation so she was kind of like you know like thinking about whether to tell it or not and because of her you know, personality which we later on get to know that she really doesn't want to bother people you know uh, her she actually took a little bit of time uh, to you know uh, come up with the problem and then by the end of it she if, like she herself doesn't even say it um uh, yuzu uh, yuzuki uh, <clears throat> kind of like you know asked her and you know like forced it out of her she's like yeah tell me what is your problem and she like you know says that yeah i probably lost my passport and that's when we see how shirase is as we know you know shirase is mm, you know so much you know uh, what can i say like she has so much hopes on this expedition you know this is something that she's been trying to do for quite a long time and you know like she kind of got a little bit anxious and she's like oh like are we going to be okay like you know when when everyone's like fussing about the passport she was like won't the seniors be uh you know angry at this like you know i will be able to reach their oh, like you know fine if we try to find a passport wouldn't it be a problem this and that which as like you know as we can understand like obviously like you know the person who lost the passport that is um hinata she would be a little bothered by these kind of like you know uh, comments so she was like all right you know like um, it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere, uh, uh, you know, sometimes later. And then she later on tells she, she has said like, okay, like you guys go ahead. I'll try to find the passport. And if I'm unable to find it, I'll probably go back. And obviously, she has understood like you know she like made a mistake by like you know wording it that way. It seemed a little bit rude and you know selfish. So she tells her like, oh, I also like you know like this is like my problem. I always like you know go to like you know stuff as planned if something goes uh, a little bit different than my plan i kind of get anxious this and that all that stuff and as always like, you know, she, uh, hinata is also being a little bit uh what do you call it stubborn she's like no you go ahead because i don't want anyone others getting bothered by me you know that's why i always kept to myself in the school you know and all that stuff like this is like the, the whole thing uh so i'm glad by the end of it shirase actually stuck like you know stuck to the thing that she was doing she was like no like we're going to go together and even if it leaves a million yen i'm going to pay to get a like you know a, a proper tickets to go there so she brings out the million yen and she's like uh, yeah like i don't care uh, we need two tickets uh by this time to the receptions in the airport and like here like you know like like this was a nice little conclusion i'm really glad that they uh, sorted it out because again this would be it would have been a problem in the future um <clears throat> and we also kind of understood stand like you know hinata a bit more like you know what she like you know what actually bothers her you know like she doesn't want others fussing about her and others being bothered because of her while Shirase is a little bit, you know, too, what can I say, like vocal about her, like, you know, problems. And she you know, doesn't like when something goes un according to her plan, not according to her plan. And it always bothers. And since this is like related to her mom, she was a little bit too, you know, like stubborn about this whole situation. But everything goes well. And the passport, like, you know, turns, up, turns, turns out that it was with Shirase all along. So... <laughs> Like by the end of it, like you know, everything's fine. Like uh, they returned the tickets, and I'm guessing they got the million yen back. So yeah, let's see what this episode brings. I'm really loving these two episodes. Was like really amazing. The whole thing with Megu and uh, this time like Hinata and Shirase. And yeah, I'm looking forward to what more this uh, what more uh, this show brings to us. So let's get started. This is episode number seven of A Place Further Than the Universe. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it whichever is your preference, and let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Who's this? Oh, is this, uh, is this Jean?
<laughs> oh my god. What type of a skin is that? It's so stretchable. No, this... Oh, that was also... Oh, okay. That was Gin, wasn't it? Or Jin. I don't even know how you pronounce her name. Gin or Jin? Gin, I think. Todo Gin, yeah. <clears throat> All right, anyways. Oh, you know what I realized? I think the first scene, was that like a flashback they were showing? Because I, I was like, wait a minute, is that Gin? Because her clothing changed in once the next scene. You know, the first scene she was wearing that dress, you know, that you know, orange dress. And she was smiling and everything so anxious about talking that's why i thought is that really gain because i thought she was very like you know um, confident in her approach and everything but while she, here she was a little bit hesitant so i'm guessing that was a flashback when um shia's mom went or maybe i'm mistaken and the next thing that we see where she's like you know standing there and just you know, in, in the black suit, and then one of the one of the friends come in. That is the present. Okay, I, it took me a while to understand what was happening there. <clears throat> the ship that sees the universe. <laughs> oh my god again the jump <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow Yeah, that's not working. Wow, okay. <laughs> Miserable. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> All right, they're here. Oh. <laughs> Four person room. All right, that sounds works out well, I guess. <laughs> They'll be fine. Yeah, who who's going to get the There you go. <laughs> okay. All right, makes sense. Oh, yeah, that's definitely needed. <laughs> okay, don't trip. Don't trip, yeah. All right. <laughs> Wait, what's what's she doing? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Wait. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. Oh boy. 
I also don't like heights. Like, it kind of like makes me anxious. <laughs> it makes me anxious. No cat. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Nay. Not there. All right. Hmm. Do your best. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, she's so stiff. <laughs> Um, worthless. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh. all right. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, true. <laughs> so big. <laughs> oh. What? Oh, maybe because there aren't. Oh, okay. Not even do. Yeah, but maybe there is something. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, they're going grocery shop. Okay. <laughs> Pudding. Oh. Drop him. Hmm. Maybe not enough budget? <clears throat> oh. Okay. Uh, there you go, I was just saying this. Not enough people. Hmm. Hmm. Why? Oh, yeah, we were... Hmm. <clears throat> oh. Well, everyone's kind of anxious, obviously, because yeah, is everything okay? Oh yeah, that as well, obviously. Okay. Yeah. To see this question, please. Hmm. Okay. There you go.
Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. Well, this is obvious, but I didn't know about the sunscreen part. Okay. Hmm. This time it is to see the sky. <clears throat> okay. Hiding something. Uh. <laughs> Whoa, like this? What? Why? <laughs> She's What the? Um. <laughs> oh my god. What? <laughs> <laughs> project itself might not be possible project you're And part of the fish okay yeah there are that means planning something else extremely distant goal okay oh um you're visible Yeah, you're drunk. <laughs> yeah, so? Oh my gosh, she's going to say something ridiculous. Yeah, all right, here we go. <laughs> Oh my god. And it's probably something related to her mom. Um to Shia's mom. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. They did leave something, I guess. Think so. Oh. Hmm. Place more distant than the universe. Hmm. 
Oh, so the again. Hmm. Oh. All right, and there, there's that's like the three of them. Civilian stations. Oh, okay, okay, makes sense. All right. Astronomical. Okay, so they were. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, what happened? Oh boy. Hmm. Oh, okay, okay. So these are all people who were there at that time. <laughs> that was like the same scene that Mari and Shira say. Lost here. <laughs> it drew. <laughs> okay, so all of them are here. Almost all of them. Okay, here we go. <laughs> what? Oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> He's just eating taco and this guy. Yep, everyone has memories of that time and, you know, that's why they're here, even after three years.
Yep, I'm here for work. But I have friends now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> oh, wow. Is she going to bring up her mom? Let's see. She's probably going to. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. She brings up her mom. <laughs> All right. Okay, that was good. Okay, so we actually get to know what what type of goal the previous generation that went had. Now, now here's one thing. I've always found it really like you know unusual that there's like a very lack of information about Shiraz's mom. Like I feel like they're hinting that she is not alive. But I'm not sure about it. Like, the way it's going, like... I don't know, like... Like, the, the vibe that this show's, show gives out is like... Yeah, her mom is probably not alive. You know, like that whole scene of... I think she probably is not alive. But I don't know why, but sometimes I feel like the way... Like, you know, like they show the flashbacks and everything. And the way, you know, like Gin and uh, the other girl, I forgot her name. They talk about her mom. I feel like they're hinting that she's alive or something, but I, I don't think she's alive. But as I said, like, you know, the, the, the lack of information, how did she die? Like we, whenever like, you know, that, that part comes up, you know, the, we, we get that scene of like, you know, them like, you know, calling uh, Shira says mom from outside, like a, a, a little a thing. I don't know what that actually is. Like I'm banging on the, window okay whoa what's happening oh my god is this, uh, did they like get into a storm or something oh that'll be dangerous right as, as i was saying like you know whenever we, we get into some like you know that type of a portion where i feel like oh they're going to say give us more information about shiraz's mom that scene shows up where there's like you know that snowstorm is happening and you know they're calling to her mom out and that's just it. They don't. They don't go. I'm. I'm pretty sure we're going to know by the end of this show that what actually happened to her mom and how, if she is dead, how did she die? Like you know, like I feel like I don't know. I feel like there there will be like a little twist by the end of it. I feel like like you know, like by the end we'll get to see that her mom is in coma or something. I don't know, but I have this weird feeling because like if she really died like you know they would just i feel like they would just show that yeah like you know she went there she was unable to come back and died and and, and another thing but i feel like that's just like you know like in the ending scene where um the girl uh um the lady um she says mom's friend uh the other lady i'm not talking about todo again i i, I don't i think kanai is that her name i think so um she says like all of us who went there came back and now we are here again like i don't know if i'm looking too much into it but if her mom really died over there i feel like she wouldn't say that like i don't know like that's what i'm saying you know like there's there's a very lack of like you know information about um shira's mom that it actually makes me wonder if she really is dead or not. If she if she's actually dead, if she was dead, 
they would have just showed that to us and tell us how she died or what happened and then she also would be like yeah i'm i'm going to like you know um you know fulfill my mother's dream and i'm going to go there and there's this also another thing like she has it says uh, as far as i can remember she says like i'm going to the place like i think in the first episode like to find my mom or something like that i don't know she said something like that as far as i can remember like all these like you know things i, f I feel like there there is something else over it like i really wouldn't be surprised you know if by the end of it we get to know that oh like you know something really did happen over there and then she, maybe she went into coma or maybe she went missing or something you know maybe something like that happened and she is like you know she cannot be found or um yeah i think it's probably something like that either she went missing in antarctica or something like that happened either that or she went into a coma and she's in a hospital or something you know and maybe in the ending episode they're going to show us like oh like you know she's in the hospital and maybe that she'll wake up like it wouldn't surprise me if something like that happens because the, the the lack of information really bothers me sometimes i feel like there's something else going on in the background or maybe i'm looking too much into it either of it i don't know but anyways okay this episode we kind of you know get a little uh what do you call it little tour of the whole thing and now we see a, at the beginning we see a little flashback where she says mom i think kanai was her name let you know what let me check is her name kanai um okay. like I, I feel like i need to check her name uh as soon as possible because she will be one of the main characters okay um so the again can i there you go can i okay wait there's another girl who really looks like can i oh that's the other girl um yumiko samejima that's the other girl we saw you know like who was like uh, you know carrying those heavy boxes um that's samejima yumiko and the the girl that we like you know see with like the three of them one is todo gin one is um uh, their mom which is our takako takako that's her name that's the mom's name all right takako kanai and gin these three these three were i'm guessing very close friends and uh, all and all the other characters were there in the boat when like you know when they went there in antarctica they were also their companions okay the first scene like you know like I, I i at the beginning i wasn't able to properly understand what was happening i was like wait a minute why is todogin acting so like you know shy around like you know like you know when they were like you know taking uh like uh what do you call it like the the media were like you know asking her them her questions i was like why is she acting like this and then like you know the next scene we see her standing there and that it took a bit of time for me to actually realize what happened they actually showed like the past and the present you know one after the other the first scene was the past where all the three of them there were there you know um shira says mom and kanai and uh, gin and gin at that moment i'm guessing gin was obviously pretty and comfortable around strangers or maybe shy but now as we can see like she's confident straightforward and just there and standing there and only like it's sad to see like you know only kanai come out while in the past we saw both of them were there but now she has his mom is not here so yeah anyways that was that the first scene and then we get back to the present where we see shirase practicing about the whole reporting thing how she's able like you know going to do that and she is really bad at it obviously she's uncomfortable shy at to like you know talk in front of a camera and she's very stiff it's like <laughs> oh my god and like i don't know why like i i guess like you know yusuki like obviously yusuki was also co-hosting with her but i don't know why but why didn't hinata or uh, kimari do the reporting like I, I don't i don't know about kimari because i think kimari would have probably forgotten the lines 
she's that type of a girl but i feel like hinata could have done that couldn't she you know like as, as being the reporter <laughs> i don't know anyways uh but yeah okay so uh that was that and then we get inside the uh ship where we are being assigned like you know different places where to go what to do what to not do uh we are also assigned the room a four person room it's nice like you know they could they could be here like you know like obviously like um they are friends and like you know being at the same place it's it's convenient as well and it's also fun because they can like you know have you know talk with each other late up until the night and other stuff so like interesting to see how like you know the different things in the boats work like for example they have to keep an eye out on for small little things like what happens if the like obviously the boat will move so the the things are locked i could i could see like there was like tapes and everything you know the laptop was also taped to the um to the table i think it's probably because of the boat when it moves it will probably like you know topple over the laptop or something that's why it's taped to the table which i kind of noticed you know there's like a yellow tape taping the laptop and uh, like yeah all these things it's not a, okay that's not a tape i think that's a belt or something something like that but yeah they were like finding stuff trying to like you know see what what there was and they kind of go at a, on a little exploration outside and huh, we get to know Yuzuki is afraid of heights uh which is pretty like you know relatable because uh i myself kind of get a little antsy whenever like you know i am at a height like looking down really messes with me and i'm not comfortable with that so it really is relatable <laughs> my god okay now here they start you know like get like seeing like how people are like you know there's very lack amount like lack of people not much staff there and everything and yuzuki is like what is happening well, like why is it like this you know, is something going on like are they hiding something from us and um <clears throat> okay like and then like you know when they were, they were doing that like you know that um reporting thing um they ask again about what is your plan and she is like um we have a several plans um the first thing she says is soya station has been unmanned since the winter team pulled out so restoring it to normal functionality is a primary motivation okay there you go um but then there there oh she doesn't say it here okay i think she says it later on like you know like uh I, we want to see the um uh, sky i think that's what she says i think she says that later on okay yeah but here okay so like um they are like you know seeing all of these different you know like what can i say like lack of people lack of what do you call it like everything like there's something going on use kids a little bit paranoid about that she's like what is happening and um gin tells like oh that um room that you were using that's the room that takako used and then they are like okay let's see if they did something left something for the future people who are going to be here but they were unable to find anything and then they go out to help everyone bring groceries and everything and um yeah and now also like you know the people like the the grocery store owner or whatever you know he's, he says stuff like you know again she, like um, in, at conversations it comes out She's, he says this isn't that much actually the new ship that came by last week had a whole container full and like here's where i realized like oh it's probably funding you know like they have lack of funding and not only funding lack of manpower as well and um all that stuff so all the people that are here um obviously like you know they have their own personal reason for coming here we get to know that a little bit later after that um i'll talk about it okay then um where is it yeah okay then yusuke kind of starts freaking out she's like what's happening you know is everything like you know like are they trying to hide something or not and she like you know actually directly goes to kanai and asks her like is everything fine like you know what's happening and she's at first she she kind of jokes around and she's like okay like you know like i understand that it's a little bit you know like unnerving for you guys but 
um it talks about how like you know since we are civilians we had to make a lot of cuts and like you know manpower is less funding is also a little bit low and she said like we are definitely going all the people that are here are like you know we are here to go and we are here to like you know fulfill our uh dream our not dream but goal now here's what she says i think where is it um here we go this time it's to see the sky i suppose okay so obviously at that moment i was like what sky what is she talking about which we get like you know why she said that we understand that later on okay so here after that yuzuki comes back and yuzuki is like what is happening something's going on let's go and investigate and then they like you know come across a girl who's just <laughs> freaked out like talking in the phone like probably her her boyfriend or something you know like said something about like, you know they have like a problem because she came here and you know like is going to accompany them to Antarctica <laughs> and then like you know we also go with with that guy what, what's the guy's name the guy the, the only guy um not the only guy but the guy who was with them with Kanai so <clears throat> here we get a, a substantial amount of information here um she, he says like the project itself might not be possible and like you know, the other girl was like, we are not sure right, uh, yet, you know, like we cannot say it at this moment. Um, okay, and then like, you know, they talk about some other plan that the commander that is Gin and Kanai are planning about, which they're very much, you know, like obsessed with. They start talking about that and which is not like, you know, the same plan that we have. And like see hearing this uh, yuzuki is like oh my god something's happening are they trying to <laughs> like you know do something else or something like you know she starts freaking out and that's where like you know then they like this turn off the light and then they find out the little dots in the, the i'm guessing those are like fluorescent ink or something most probably that probably her, her mom did when she like you know was, was here and she has to connect the dots now she's like oh the sky and this and she goes outside and here's where we get to know the actual reasoning why what is the plan of kanai and gin um okay where is it okay here we get a flashback now in the flashback okay here it is All right. Um, in the flashback, if they're saying as civilians, question mark, yeah, after the new ship is finished, they'll be deployed to the new station. New ship is finished, deployed to the new station, and current ship and Soya station will be transferred to civilian ownership. Okay, I understand it now. I it it, it was actually a little bit difficult for me to understand what was happening here since I was reacting to it at the same time. So basically, like, so I'm guessing they're making like a new ship and like a station. So after that, like, you know, happens, like it's completed. You know, Kanai says that this ship and the um, Soya station, they'll be transferred to civilian ownership. Yeah, and the, she says like, we can become the first civilian team. Okay. To go there and obviously. Now, uh, so this, this scene really reminds me of that scene where, you know, like, um, I think uh, where they were talking about, like, you know, both um, Kimari and Shirase were planning, you know, how to get into the ship, like, you know, uh, because they're taking civilians, they should take advantage of that, you know, and, uh, you know, like, go to Antarctica when they were discussing that, you know, and when they were talking about the, like, you know, the, the money it'll take and all that stuff, it really reminded me of that because I feel like this scene was kind of similar to that. They were like, you know, these three girls, they were also waiting for an opportunity for it to come under civilian you know, ownership. That's why, like, you know, so that they can go to Antarctica using that as an opportunity. Okay. So yeah, so that's basically what happened. So they they took this opportunity when it came to civilian or like you know ownership and that's why they were able to go to antarctica 
and what was their goal now here's the thing here's another question that we have um okay and they did a lot of other preparations as well as they say here, here it is there's no almost no civilian station anywhere in the world so we came up with all kinds of plans gathered all kinds of researchers um we all wanted to make it a success okay so one thing like you know correct me if i'm wrong um i'm not sure if i'm actually able to understand what a civilian station means but i'm guessing it's basically like you know civilians could also go to antarctica because like you know obviously antarctica is a place like so uh, far away i'm guessing only researchers and like you know other people who need to go there you know like um the, obviously the pilot the, the person who's going to steer the ship and other people like you know um who are accustomed there who are not civilians they are only allowed to go there and all you know operate the station and everything so i'm guessing a civilian station means like civilians like us could also go there i'm guessing that's what it means i'm com i'm not completely sure if that's what it means but i'm guessing it's something like that okay um and obviously they had to go through a lot of things you know like um they had to convince a, a lot of people the higher ups and everything i'm guessing get enough money get enough people all that stuff and uh, yeah okay now here's the thing here okay their plan after that another flashback um an astronomical observatory the plan's been out there for a while I'd heard they were building one at the new station too. That's all the more reason. We might not be able to rival their scale and amenities, but I think being able to do some the same research as the new station is the most important thing we can do as civilians in the future. Okay, so oh, so basically their dream is making an astronomical observatory in a civilian station. I'm guessing so that the future people who are going to visit here civilians they will be able to also experience that I'm guessing that's their dream you know and uh, like so as, as they were saying like obviously we cannot do it on the scale of the other like you know like people how like you know other group the other stations how they're doing it because obviously they are getting funding from the government they're getting a lot of other like you know um what do you call it like manpower funds everything they're going getting a lot in plenty amount and they're able to do it professionally while here i'm guessing all they they have to like you know make preparations for everything and like you know hire people and, and all that stuff so that's why she's saying like yeah we are going to make an astronomical observatory like you know so that we're able to watch the sky and that's why i'm guessing that that's their dream her dream watching the sky in antarctica so that future civilians who are going to come here, they are also able to experience that. I think that's what they were trying to do. Okay, makes sense now. Um, all right. So now again, like you know, here, like they were talking about this, and again we go to another flashback. Um, we see like this scene again. We see this scene where Kana is outside, you know, and make a. a what's her name again again is just shouting from like an it's like so snowstorm is going she's shouting like through a window oh i think they're inside aren't they okay okay wait a minute yeah oh i think they're inside the the, the station that we were seeing and she was looking outside you know it's like snowing and the snowstorm is there Oh, okay. I think I understand what basically happened. So I'm guessing she got lost in the snowstorm. Is that what happened? Okay, you know what? I was just talking about in the beginning. Like we don't have any, like, you know, we don't know what actually happened to her mom. Maybe she's in coma. Maybe she is missing. I think it's probably that she's missing or something. That's obviously, that's also the reason why I guess, um, uh, she has said that I, like, you know, my mom is waiting in Antarctica, you know, in the first episode. I'm going to go there to find her or something. She says something along these lines. So that's probably why there is like so lack of information about Takako. That is Shiase's mom. Because they don't know where she is. And maybe she's still missing or something. So she's not, it's, it's not confirmed that she's dead. 
So she's basically missing. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Because that's what I can gather from this episode. Okay, and obviously then they came back and she says how, like, you know, how a harsh reality for waiting, we're waiting for them. Sponsors afraid of the damage to their image. There you go, withdraw one after the other. And I'm guessing that's why, like, you know, this whole operation was uh, stopped for three years. Like, after, I'm guessing after that whole thing happened the, with Takako, probably, like, you know, the different people got, like, you know, obviously, like, you know, this is like a danger to a human life. And the sponsors who were, I'm guessing, sponsoring them up, them up until now, they withdrew. You know, this probably went on the media and everyone got scared about this whole situation. And they probably thought that, yeah, this whole civilian station thing was probably a mistake. We should not do this. And that's why they started withdrawing. And that's what she's saying here. Like, uh, sponsors afraid of the damage to their image withdrew after one after the other. And the next, uh, there you go, next ex expedition was indefinitely postponed. And the winter mission was withdrawn. But they still had that dream within, within them. They did not want to stop here just because of that. Yeah, her mom wanted to see the stars. And they are like, you know, like, they're determined to make that happen. Not only them, all the people who are here, they are not doing it for, you know, they're doing it for their personal reason, for their personal because they want to do it. I'm, you know, I'm, all of the people that are here were also, I'm guessing, present in that expedition three years ago as well. And that's why they're here again, even though they are saying that, oh, this might not work. You know, this isn't like, like a big problem. And, uh, you know, like, I don't know how much we'll be able to do it. They're saying all of this stuff, but still they are here because even though they know that it might not work, they want to see it work. And that's why they're doing everything. Like we even saw that girl who's just crying in her phone, you know, like, like talking probably to her boyfriend or girlfriend, I don't know who, um, but you know, like just talking and saying like, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like even, even, even like, you know, she's here, you know, because she wants to see this happen because she was here three years ago as well, I'm guessing. So like everyone, like, you know, just like, you know, like, leaving everything that they are doing their own livelihood everything they are here at this moment because they want to see this succeed and um, yeah and then we get the, the flashback of gin and um takako where it's a similar scene that we saw shirase and kimari like you know when they were seeing in a little sitting in that shed you know that little shed thing and you know like they were get trying like you know, almost getting bullied like you know those girls were chasing them no, that scene where you know like um i think that's when she has to said for the first time like i'm we're going to antarctica i'm going to antarctica and and that's what the money is for and it's a similar scene like you know we see um todo uh, not todo sorry um uh takako suddenly saying like todo do you want to go to antarctica and i love leaving my footprints in the fresh snow <laughs> And that's where the dream started. And that's why they're here after so, even after so long. Gazing that same dream, even though one of them is still not here. You know, it is not here at this moment. Okay, and then we get to the, the next scene where Kanai, like, you know, introduces everyone. Like, you know, she starts saying, like, oh, like, all of us are here. We were there one day, you know, three years ago. And we're here. A lot of us have changed. Some of us have, have probably gone bald. <laughs> Some of us like has probably like, you know, done something different with our lives, but we are still here today. You know, in this moment, we're back again. And, you know, to chase that one dream that we had one day. And here are our new, um, pass not passengers. Here are our new companions who are going to join us. And uh, you know, she introduces the, the three of them and they kind of introduce themselves. And Imari like, uh, says that, yeah, like I wanted to do something you know, with my life. I was not happy with the way I was just standing still. So I just thought, let's go to Antarctica. <laughs> Yuzuki is like, yeah, I'm here for my job. And that's why, you know, like I'm like, you know, here. But like, you know, in in in, the, in that process, I've found a lot of like you know my new friends, and that's why now I'm here because of them. 
and Kimari, uh, not Kimari, Hinata is like, I wanted to do something for big before the exams and everything. So that's why I'm here. While Shirase says like, yeah, like I want to, no, I want to open the treasure chest of Antarctica. Where is it? That my mother wrote about with my, uh, with her own two hands. Yeah. That was it. And then Gin was kind of laughing a little bit. And yeah. Okay, so that was it. So, um, like, I had a little bit of problem understanding what was going on because of the different things. But by the end of it, I, I understand pretty well now. Because that portion, I, I really didn't understand. When I was reacting to it, I did not understand what was happening. The whole, like, you know, uh, information that were, they were giving us. Like, oh, like, you know, civilian station, this, that. You know, what happened a few years ago. And what their actual goal is, is making an astronomical observatory, this and that. All those things I, I wasn't able to understand when I was reacting. Clearly, I understood the, the gist of it. But I, the, clearly, I wasn't able to understand. But after coming back in the discussion section and reading that part again, I, I very clearly understand now. So that's basically what they were trying to do. So basically, their dream was to, you know, go there make a civilian station and they got that opportunity because they saw, saw like this this ship and like the station is going to come out of the like you know they cannot become like a civilian thing so they took that opportunity gathered all the people get got sponsorships this and that and went there as a civilian expedition team and their goal was to make an astronomical observatory there so that people in the future might also come civilians get the opportunity to see the antarctic uh, uh, sky and that's what their goal was but now here's where i'm not sure what happened after this which they are also not like you know giving us proper information about i'm guessing they're going to do that later on something happened here the mom probably like you know takako probably got missing in antarctica or something else happened something that endangered her life or maybe she's still missing we don't know but something happened they came back takako did not come back and um you know like the sponsors on all of them like you know they they started backing out because of that incident or that whatever happened and for three years i'm guessing it was like you know stopped the whole thing was just stopped because of lack of funds lack of manpower all of that and i'm guessing they were you know trying to collect all the funds gin and kanai and everyone trying to collect the funds enough to just go there again and finally they were able to do it and this year they like you know started this whole thing and you know they like they are going to take uh, civilians as well with them and that's how all these these four girls are here it's it's probably something like that so yeah anyway that was it that was a great episode it kind of gave us a, quite a few information the background of why like you know like you know what happened at, at, on those like you know those years ago and know how they are connected how they are friends how, all that stuff we get more information about and we get more background on the characters so yeah that was it thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to a place further than the universe episode number seven so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out and if i'm wrong about anything correct me down and um, yeah, that was it. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next week with another episode of A Place Further Than The Universe. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.